go, go, go. Do it, do. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another playthrough of Alcana. Last time, we made it through the prologue and we met Asuka, the main heroine. And I realized last time I wasn't very well dressed, so I, did I decided to wear something that's more befitting of a schoolgirl. You like it? I know it's not exactly the same as what they're wearing, but it's the closest I could come up with. All right, let's go. Are you ready to fly? They told me to head to the faculty room, so we should split up here. Okay, well, I'll see you around then. Hi. Aw, she's so sweet. Kurishina san bows a direct ba 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 ba. <laughs> Kurishina san directs a bow at me, then runs off to the building where the facility room is located. Now then, shouldn't waste time loitering. Need to head back to the classroom before Mrs. before Miss Kagami swats me. <laughs> She's starting rumors. She's starting rumors. He's flying. He was flying. He was using the boots. Oh, I hope he starts to fly again. Look at this classroom. Look how busy it is. Look at this poor girl in the back. He just wants to go where she's going. And this guy's falling asleep. And this girl's talking to her friend. Oh, no, wait. She's not talking to him. She's talking to her. Oh, they're talking from across the classroom. And you have this girl in the back reading some sort of book. That's me. I'm I'm the girl in the back reading the book. And then another girl with the short haircut and the flowers. I just love how populated this world is. It feels so vibrant and fresh and new and lived in. Really fantastic world building. What's in her desk? Oh, oh, that's a pencil holder. And, and somebody has a little, somebody has a little stuffed animal. That's so cute. Ah, ah, I made it somehow. I plop down onto my seat and breathe a sigh of relief. Oh no! Oh, it was only for two seconds, guys. And you're already making a big deal out of it. I just had to ask, huh? One of my classmates suddenly appears before me, and then she starts questioning me. Her name is Misaki Tobisawa. Since we sit close to each other and were in the same class last year, we end up chatting a lot. She's really pretty. She's beautiful. A real classic beauty, very elegant. Wait. Hold on. Uh, she sure is a lot like me in other ways too. Or not like me. A lot uh, more endowed than me in other ways too, huh? I'm jealous. That's okay. Maybe I'll hit a growth spurt. You know? You never know. Never say never. She's the only girl in my class who's on casual speaking terms with me. Anyway, it's pretty common for her to start a random conversations, especially first thing in the morning. I'm the same way. I like to talk first thing in the morning. That's the best time to talk. Gotta say, I'm surprised she saw that. I mean, I tried to get away from Kurishina sound as fast as possible. That's so mean. Ugh, don't be trying to be a cool loner. That just so mean you trying to get away from her? All she wanted was some help. Good morning, Misaki. You know, you should really at least greet me first thing before grilling me. Mm. Ah, she's so sleepy. Look at that little sleepy face. I want to pinch her cheeks. Pinch, pinch. She waves her hand at me with an absent-minded look on her face. Obviously, Misaki has low blood pressure, 
Does that mean she's tired or more lethargic? So, what was that about me holding hands? But she ends up ignoring me. You literally just asked me about the girl who's holding my hand. Don't remind her, then she'll talk about it. Ah, she's so sleepy. You have some good eyes. I mean, most people don't just happen to catch a glimpse of things that are so far away. Oh, she's jealous. She's jealous. She's jealous. Don't try to play it cool. I know you're jealous. Woman's intuition. <laughs> you can't even follow a conversation. You serious? I don't even remember. I love that face, but you clearly didn't eat very much. You clearly didn't eat very much. Where, where is all that food going, huh? Just tell me, on first glance, where you think all that food is going, huh? Hmm? I'll, I'll tell you where I think it's going. It's obviously going to her chest, if not her stomach. I'm so jealous. I wish I had that sort of power. You know, I was trying to line myself up so that I'm next to her, but it doesn't seem to be quite right. Oh well. I was trying to draw a direct comparison for you guys. You can see how, uh, how well grown she is. She's certainly, uh, well grown, isn't she? You need to eat more for breakfast. You're still hungry. With how disjointed our conversation tends to be, I can't help but wonder if she's all right. I mean, low blood pressure only explains so much. She does seem a little bit, a little bit dazed, doesn't she? A little out of it. Hey, hey. Zane, hey, ah, the teacher, the teacher who dresses, dresses like a rock star. What is with those shorts? They're not even buckled. Oh, she can perk up when she wants to. Oh, the class is totally full now. She's the one with the really cute, with the really cute pencil holder. And this girl has like polka dots on hers. Ah, oh, it's really cute. This girl isn't even paying attention. She's just talking. Yeah. I put my thoughts aside and focus on class. She's good at all kinds of sports and drop dead gorgeous, but is also the scariest teacher at Kunahama Academy. This is my homeroom teacher, Aoi Kagami. Uh, let me guess, they're all going to join the club or they have to protect it from being disbanded, right? By the way, I owe a lot to Aoi-san. I mean, uh, Miss Kagami. And my debt started racking up far before I even joined Kunahama Academy. She was his coach. She was his coach when he was a kid. Aha! In fact, it mostly comes from the help she provided when I was younger. So yeah, I was obviously pretty shocked when she ended up being my homeroom teacher. Yeah, we're second years. Yeah, you can't be mean to newcomers, you have to be nice to them. Otherwise, how will they learn? Says the person who has a mountain of dirt on her students. <laughs> That's true, I forgot. That's so irresponsible of her. But close enough for me to make that kind of joke, but I can't do much more than whisper it. If she catches me talking behind her back, she'll show no mercy. Yeah, home room, huh? That was it. 
That was it. I'm not much of a lecture. A wave of relief washes over me, which finally allows me to relax. Oh no! Uh, Miss Kagami doesn't care that we're at school. She always calls me by my first name. What's up? Ah! Oh no! What do you want to talk about? Oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 I don't, I don't want to be punished, I don't want to be punished, go away, I'm gonna hide here in the corner, I don't want to be punished, go away, ah, uh, did she hear me back then, or is this about me arriving late, is it safe, can I come out now? Which one of those did she catch? I don't know. Hopefully she's not too mad. Oh, now she's really cheerful now that school is over. I'm the same way. You're super sleepy once class starts, but once it's over, you're just so excited to go home and eat. Well, yeah, I know. She's the same way, she wants to know what she can eat. Same, same, I'm all about snacks. I just want to go to the store after school and get snacks. What are your favorite snacks? My favorite snacks, I really like those little jelly rolls with the cake and the jelly and the cream in the center. And I also like those little rice balls with the spam and the eel. It's really good. Right, I gotta say now, you're a totally different person once we're out of class. Not that that's anything new. Her extreme mood shifts are downright concerning. No, they're not. Since she has low blood pressure in the morning, maybe it's spiked and she popped a vessel. No, that's not very nice. Uh, she has a little fang. It's cute. Do you agree with me, huh? No, there's no twin. This girl is our class representative, Madoka Aoyagi. She's a friend of Misaki, so I ended up talking to her a lot. Although, unlike Misaki, she's a normal human being with a fang and blue hair. No, no you're not. You're not a nut job. No, don't be mean. Then quit acting like you are. Can't blame us for doubting you when it looks like you are. That's mean, no bully. Yeah, exactly. She's just being true to herself. Oh, really? I'm so jealous. More that I'm a free spirit, just being true to yourself. No, you're being gloomy because you you were remembering the past and you had the bad dream. Oh, that sounds good. Udon, the really thick noodles with the with the umami savory sauce, sounds really good. Bye, Misaki. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> she just wanted to eat udon. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh no. Oh, again, just these backgrounds are so rich. Look at these backgrounds. You have this girl apologizing to this boy. You have these two talking. You have this guy over here alone. You have these two cute, this cute couple over here, the, the kohai. And the senpai, I just, I love, I love how dense and thoughtful this world is when it comes to all the different details and all the different people. I almost bump into a girl as I leave class. Sorry, are you okay? Ah, uh, itty bitty, she's so tiny, she's the small, 
He's the small Kohai. Sorry about that, Harishaka. Oh, yeah, yeah, so no. Ah, uh, she must be really short. <laughs> she has the cutest little cardigan. The two of us end up apologizing to each other for a while. I'm guessing you came to get Misaki? Oh, she's in love with Misaki. She totally is. Aww. No idea why she's acting like that's only natural, but moving on. You want me to call Misaki? Hey, Misaki! Alright, I'm heading out now. <laughs> well, I'm not going home yet. Don't worry about it. I'll see you. I walk away, leaving behind a puzzled Arisaka. Aww, look at them. They're so cute. They're, they're again, the Kohai, or, or the Kohai and the Senpai. Ah, they're so adorable. I want to get in on that. I want to get in on their, on their lovey-dovey group. Let me see. Let me see if I can fit in. Hey, now we're all part of it. Aw, she's giving her a big hug. That's sweet. Aw, don't play hard to get. He just is enthusiastic. He ditched you. Oh no, where is he going? Oh, that's right. He has to go talk to the teacher. No! <laughs> I don't think that's it. I think he has to go talk to the teacher. She's definitely jealous. Aha! I head over to the faculty room. Excuse me. Right as I enter the faculty room, I see a hand waving me over from Aoi-san's desk. I feel a bit uneasy since I have no clue what she wants, but I head over. Thighs! Look at those thighs! They look great! Wait, is she only wearing one boot? Why are you only wearing one boot? She's in the middle of enjoying an after-work coffee, sitting there in her chair with her usual lax posture. You know, that'd be cool if she had a boot. Honestly, with the way she dresses, I'm unsure where to look. Her milky thighs enter my sight no matter what I do, so I'm unable to ignore them. Yeah, they look great. Great figure. Funny thing is, this is actually an improvement. She used to wear a mini skirt until the other teachers talked her down. <laughs> yes, and confessing. I mean, why? Oh, there she is. She wants, maybe she wants, she wants him to help train Asuka. Why wouldn't I when it's still fresh in my memories? This is, Aoi-san speaks up, white grin on her face as I sit there in silence. I wish it would be last name, first name, instead of first name, last name. That's just a pet peeve. How does she know I know her? Because she saw you this morning! Yeah, of course. Ah, she's teasing him? Seriously? I didn't even realize he was watching us. Aoi San isn't the kind of person who has any problem with students dating, but she's also famous for chewing out anyone who's fooling around. As long as it's not at school, I mean, I don't see the big deal. 
I'm telling off the people who come to interrupt us when... They're my friends. Ignore them. They aren't really worth your talk. I'll give you snacks. Ah, uh, she's a ser she's Misaki's servant. She definitely has a crush on Misaki. Oh my gosh! Yeah, we're all talking over each other. Stop it! Stop it! Ah, they're still going. They're still talking over each other. Oh my gosh! Forget them. I'm gonna teach you the basics of grab shoes. They're all just hanging out in the background. I'm begging you guys, just keep quiet. After directing a glare at Misaki and her companion, I pick up a pair of grab shoes and get started with the explanation. We'll start with the history. An instructor can't just teach a person to fly and be done with it, why not? Oh, much like how a person has to learn the laws of the land when trying to get a driver's license, there are steps that must be followed. Sure, my methods may be a little regular, uh, uh, irregular, but the overall rules remain the same. And so, I'll begin with the absolute basics, namely the history of grab shoes. One important discovery 15 years ago laid the foundation for the invention of grab shoes. Before that, the only real way to fly were things like airplanes, which used fossil fuels. Ah, oh, we're environmentally friendly. However, 15 years ago, an experiment was conducted at the Large Hadron Collider in the Rajasthan state of India. In that experiment, scientists discovered particles that turned the very laws that govern the world upside down. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yes. The discovery of strange particles that defy gravity, anti-gravitons, led to a groundbreaking invention, and that invention was... Grav shoes. Anti-gravitation shoes, which are commonly referred to as grav shoes. Most consider them to be the greatest invention brought about by the discovery of the anti-graviton. What you need to understand is that it doesn't work by blocking gravity or simply repelling it. Think of it more as submarines float on water. Alright, let's leave more history for another time and try flying a little. Yeah, we can break lessons on history into small chunks and spread them out. Also, craft shoe laws don't apply on school grounds, so you don't need to know them right away. Since the laws are based on those of driver's licenses, beginners can practice on private ground. I walk over to Kurashina san and press the buttons located on the heels of the graph shoe. Alright, I turn your shoes on. First, take a small step to open your legs like I taught you this morning. Good! Now raise your heels while making sure to keep balance. Alright, all that's left is to speak the activation sequence whenever you're ready and slowly float up. Oh, I don't think that'll happen. It starts off slow at first, just like a car, so you don't need to worry. Do they even know how to drive? Oh, that's so cool. The, the little holographic wings. They're so cool. Uh, 
I like how it's, it's, it's a lot like an anime in that there are so many CGs, it's almost animated. Slowly, her body starts to float up into the air. You did it! You did it! <laughs> She's waving her arms like a kid at a water park. Something wrong? <laughs> ah, she's gonna fall. Don't worry, I set the maximum altitude to five meters. <laughs> ah, she's, ah, she fell. Oh no, poor thing. She comes down to the ground butt first. Ah, it's just like it's just like skating, you know. You can't just flail around because then you'll fall. Before you realized, you suddenly found yourself on the ground, right? That's also a feature of grab shoes. I extend my hand, grab her hand, and help her up. Okay, we're going to stop here for today. Oh, whoops. Let me just save. Alright, and with that, I think... I'm going to I'm going to stop here today too. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching, and I can't wait to share the third installment with you all. I'm really enjoying this visual novel. It's so it's so rich and lovely, and just so well put together. Everything from the music to the characters to the world building to the sci-fi lore is all so wonderful. So. Thank you for hanging in there, and I hope to see you very, very soon. Bye-bye!